Okay, we are going to begin looking at chapter 10 in your textbook, which is on measuring matter. And this is where we're going to really start getting into some new information, stuff that's not review and have, we've never covered before. So um, it's going to be very important that you pay attention, um, that you ask questions when you don't understand something, and that you take notes on this information. If you want to follow along in your book, um, chapter 10 starts on page 287 and this will follow pretty closely with the textbook so um, there are I'm doing examples right from the book so you can kind of look at that too for assistance um, I'd like you to take notes on these um, there are times when I will ask you to leave spaces because we're gonna do more examples in class um, so you could do that um, you can pause the video whenever you need to so that you can write stuff down go back listen to things again uh, that's the whole purpose of being able to do this Okay. All right. So the first section of this chapter is going to look at ways in which we measure matter. Sorry. Um, we measure matter specifically or most often in three different ways. The first is just by count, the specific number of items. Okay. I can go to the store and I can buy 12 apples. Um, that's a specific number. I can say that I have two dogs. I can say that I have two children. Okay. It's measuring by count. Um, another way that we measure things is by mass. Um, we don't often buy things by mass, but in the produce section we do. So in sticking with the apples idea, um, I could go in and buy a specific mass of apples. Let's say I put a dozen apples in a bag and it comes to two kilograms, which in our grocery stores we don't measure in kilograms. But um, And so I take it to the register and I set it on the scale and it's going to charge me by the weight of my apples, not on the number of apples, but by the weight. Okay, so that's another way that we can measure things. And then lastly is by volume. Um, and we don't often measure a whole lot of things by volume, but that's basically just the amount of space that the item is going to take up. So if, if I were to um, buy, let's say, a bushel of apples or a portion of a bushel of apples, so maybe 0.2 bushels. If a dozen, of ap dozen apples equals 0.2 bushels, this is a volume, okay? So um, those are the three ways in which we're going to be looking at measuring things. But we're going to be looking at measuring things um, in a scientific way. And so we're going to start with the mole. Okay, The mole is um, its nothing more than a unit. It's a unit that represents a number. And in this case, it represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, It's no different than saying a dozen. Um, is equal to 12 representative particles. And I say representative particles because a dozen could be 12 of anything. We most often think of it as referring to eggs, but it could be 12 apples, it could be 12 shoes, it could be 12 people, it could be 12 anything. Okay, so this representative particle um, part becomes important because that can change. The same is true with a mole. A mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything okay um, most often we look at it as representing um, atoms molecules or compounds okay so I could say if I have a mole of atoms that means that I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms but I could also say that I have a mole of molecules which would mean that I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules okay so that representative particles um, that that is the unit that you're looking at and sometimes that unit is atoms sometimes it's molecules sometimes it's compounds and um, so we're gonna look at converting from particles to moles or from moles to particles using a conversion factor and we've looked at conversion factors in the past we looked at them at the beginning of the, the year um, in preparation really for what would be happening now with the mole. So um, we can use the conversion factor to convert from one thing to another. And in the case of moles, the conversion factor looks like this. One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now, um, when we set it up like a conversion factor with one on top of the other, um, we would set it up so that the units we're trying to get rid of would cancel. Okay, um, But the unit particles can vary so we're going to look at some examples and show you why we set those up to cancel the way that we do. Um, and once again, that that unit particles could mean anything. It could mean some. It could mean atoms, like if we were referring to carbon atoms. It could mean number of compounds if we were referring to something like sodium chloride, and it re could refer to 
molecules. Okay, so keep that in mind. This table comes from your book on page um, 290, and it just kind of shows you that one representative particle, or I'm sorry, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. It doesn't matter if those particles are a single atom or if those particles are molecules or compounds or ions. One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and you're going to look at this as telling you what the unit is. Is it a single atom? Is it a compound? Is it an ion? Uh, that's where you're kind of going to get that information. So let's look at a specific question in which we are going to um, do a conversion. We're going to look at magnesium. Magnesium is a really light metal. Um, we use it a lot of times in manufacturing things that we want to be light, lightweight like aircrafts, um, automobile wheels, garden tools, furniture, etc. Um, how many moles of magnesium is 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium? This is the question we're going to look at. So let's take a look at that again. Let's read the question one more time. How many moles of magnesium is 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium? This example, by the way, is right out of your textbook. So if you don't want to write all the details down, um, it works through this in the book. So the first thing we need to do is we need to analyze what we know and what we don't know. And this step often gets skipped. And I cannot stress how important this step is. Even if you're just doing it in your head, this is a very important step. So I, first I'm going to list the things that we know. I know the number of atoms. I have 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium. I was told that in the question. They gave me that information. I also know that one mole of magnesium is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium. Okay, I know that because this is um, this is what a mole is. Is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, which in this case, because I'm talking about atoms, my particles are atoms. Okay, so I know that my desired conversion is to go from atoms, which they gave me, to moles. That's what I know that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get from moles to atoms. Okay, here's what I don't know. What I don't know is I don't know how many moles of magnesium I have. That's what I'm asked to find. So I'm going to use my given information, my known information, to figure out what I don't know. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set all this up and I'm going to solve for the unknown using the information that I know. So I always start with my known quantity. It's almost always a given piece of information. Um, in this case, 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium. My known quantity is very rarely part of the conversion factor. Okay, um, We don't generally start with a conversion factor. And I've noticed this mistake from students a lot in years past. They always want to start with this, with the conversion factor. And we don't do that. We always start with the known quantity that is given to us. So we're going to put that here, 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium and I'm going to multiply it by my conversion factor. And I'm going to set my conversion factor up so that the units that I was given are going to cancel. What I'm trying to find is what will be left. Okay, That's very important. We're going to set the conversion factor up so that we can cancel the units we start with and end with the units we're trying to find. We're trying to find mole, so that's what we want to end with. So my atoms cancel. My atoms cancel, and then we do what we've done in the past. We multiply across the top and divide by the bottom. So in this case, I would multiply 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd times 1, and then divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Remember that if you're putting this in a calculator, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd needs to be in parentheses, or you're going to get a bad number. When I do that, what I'm given, what I get is point zero. I'm sorry, 0 
moles of magnesium. Notice I started with three significant figures, three significant figures, so my answer can have three significant figures. Okay, so um, the last thing you need to do is you just need to look at your answer and say, does this make sense? In this case, um, I would expect that I would be looking at a smaller number of moles because I know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, I don't have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I only have 1.25. So I know that it's going to be a fraction of a mole. It's going to be less than one mole. This is less than one mole. And so that is, um, that is my answer. Notice the unit that did not cancel is the unit that goes behind the number. Okay, that's what I'm left with. All right, so now it's your turn to try. In your book on page 291, there are two questions, number three and number four. Okay, I would like you to try doing these questions in your notebook. You can check your answers in the back of the book to see um, how you're doing, but please show your work. Um, when we get to class, if you've got a wrong answer and you don't know how you got it, I need to be able to look at your work to see where you made the error. It is incredibly important that you understand how to do this. It's not about getting right answers, it's about understanding the process. And I cannot stress that enough because people, the, the students that take the time to understand the process are the ones who are gonna be successful at the end of the year. Um, so please take your time, work through these, and come to class and ready to discuss them.